more opportunities to drive things differently. Other people just start right from the get go. We're like, no, we're investing at the enterprise level, um, very, very top down, and just kind of forcing the change from the very top of the organization. That's kind of hard. Yeah, that think a great example of that. Um, I don't know that any one of any one of these is possible. They all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses. I think the common model that people have assumed is that you could start with the interventions and that would lead to a transformation at a project level, which would then give you like kind of credibility to then drive for transformation at the enterprise level. Very, very unclear to me that that path actually works. Um, and where it has, uh, has it been because it's a systematic path that works or were we just lucky in those one or two places? Um, exploring these models and thinking about um, what works and what doesn't work in the space is enormously interesting to me and, and another area that I'm hoping that we'll be able to dive into. Talking a little bit about the creation of, of chief digital officers and, and digital service groups, um, I uh, forwarded the slide from Graham Dada, um, who uh, was, I believe, at HCF and then was um, CIO at, at um, uh, the EPA. Uh, there's a, there are a variety of models out there right now around how we might try to do transformation. Do we need to uh, create new groups to do it? Do we need to change the way the current groups do do it? Um, do we need to hire differently? Um, and the, the truth is actually there's not, I, I have not in what I've seen observed an enormous amount of success. Uh, part of that is it's still relatively early days in government trying to transform themselves. And part of it is it's really, really hard to do. Um, a lot of this has to do with uh, driving culture change much more than it is about sorts of knowledge about the institutions, about how things used to work, um, about user needs, that those people have is absolutely essential. The, the question is, is, can we tack on this additional knowledge um, to enable those organizations to leverage what's possible? That, for me, is like the really critical piece. So I'm, I'm a little worried about just kind of like saying, well, all of the second, you know, the industrial revolution stuff doesn't matter anymore. So an enormous amount of that's hugely important. The other piece I'd add is, I think there are some very, very small interventions that we could be doing. Like an article will still work with the second industrial revolution laws. How do you manage the skills, knowledge, and orientation gaps between those two things? So I think one of the things that I've discovered is, uh, the, uh, more of the skills are transferable than people realize. And more importantly, there's a, a deep amount of domain knowledge that people will have um, in the area in which they work, so maybe in like the tax authority or in kind of in benefits or in, in security, which still is enormously relevant. So I think the big risk in this space is kind of say, well, you know, second industrial revolution, that stuff's all old news, let's, let's just like get rid of all of that. Um, and actually throw away all sorts of knowledge that people have about um, who the citizens are that they serve and assume that only someone who's a digital native, native can serve those people. Um, that's not true. There's actually all sorts of knowledge about the institutions, about how things used to work, um, about user needs, that those people have is absolutely essential. The, the question is, is, can we tack on this additional knowledge um, to enable those organizations to leverage what's possible that for me is like the really critical piece. So I'm, I'm a little worried about just kind of like saying, well, all of the second, you know, industrial revolution stuff doesn't matter anymore. So an enormous amount of that's hugely important. The other piece I'd add is, I think there are some very, very small interventions that we could be doing, recognizing that a lot of legacy stuff isn't going to change, just to make older processes significantly more efficient. That doesn't involve kind of computerizing and digitizing everything. And so figuring out what those small opportunities are and using those as an entry point, especially if you're an emerging market, I think is a huge opportunity. Fantastic. Thanks so much. So we have another question um, regarding the break between policy and operations scope. Um, so as soon as IT gets mentioned, 